welcome to today's show of Ghosts of Saltmarsh Behind the Screen. Well, we are in the finale, as they call it. It's going to take us two shows to do it. So if you're confused, trying to keep track of which show we're in, this is show number 11 of 12. Next week will be the final episode of the Ghosts of Saltmarsh. What this means for us is that this week we have to start wrapping up everything to make sure that we have a satisfactory conclusion. And we're going to be looking at exactly how I plan on doing that uh, in today's Behind the Screen. Now, if you are here to watch the, the Ghosts of Saltmarsh live play, that starts on the hour in about 24 minutes. So join us for that. This is going to contain what's going through my head and what I plan on doing in today's game and will contain spoilers. So you have been warned. Now, if you haven't watched last week's episode, um, bearing in mind that basically we have a good old fashioned player suicide on our hands. And by that I mean the players have split the party and two of them have turned invisible and have headed off to face the big bad endgame on their own without informing their companions of what they're doing. This often happens in the heat of the moment, in the emotion, in the passion. Things like this do happen. So how are we going to compensate for that? Well, we're not. We're going to continue on our journey. We're going to continue on our pathway, on our passage to bringing this whole thing to a head. So our characters are going to go and try and fight the Kraken and, of course, uh, Commodore Havost Gankari, who is the undead lich who is in charge of everything and has caused the Black Tide to come and start attacking. What we have done, though, is that we're quite lucky, if you want to call it luck, or just... It's what you do when you seed, when you throw out lots and lots and lots of options and the players pick up on some and they don't pick up on others. The most important thing that happened about two or so sessions ago was that there were two of Gellin Primewater's agents aboard the Second Chance. And instead of being killed, the players marooned them on an island so that they might be rescued and then spent a week sailing to the pit of Golgur. That allows us to do a lot of things. Those individuals could have been rescued within the hour of them being dropped off, and as a result, the news of the second chance's survival and its destination, because the players were quite free with the information as to where they were going with those two individuals, so that gives us a good opportunity to utilize them. Now, how are we going to utilize them? Well, because we're going into our final final showdown, if you if you like. These last four hours are literally the culmination of the previous 12 hours, I suppose, or six, eight hours, ten hours, however many hours it's been, of play. So we need to make sure that we conclude that as best as humanly possible. I'm going to explain what I mean after I've taken some questions. Uh, da -da -da -da. I don't know why, but I read that as Guy reads... How her plans and went. That's a weird name for a woman. Were her parents angry? Wait, I'm not sure what that's going on about. Um, BNAA UK says, Do you have any ideas as to your plans for next season yet? Will you be renaming the game? <laughs> We're not done with this season yet. We're not done with this season yet. All will be revealed next week. All I can say is we have a second season and that that second season will be beginning soon. We're just knuckling down the final details of the, uh, the show itself and it's going to be a lot of fun, whatever we end up doing. So I will reveal that next week. <clears throat> All right. Uh, now, yes, so please, if you are going to ask questions, put them with the word question up front so that I can see them um, and answer them straight away. Okay, when we're doing a conclusion, we look for the five C's. Now, the five C's is not in reference to Ghosts of Saltmarsh. It is in reference to coolness, chaos and calm, count as one, contingency, catastrophic consequences, and climax. So those C's, those five C's, we need to make sure are there. And the reason for that is we want to have a great conclusion. We want something that our players are going to sit back and go, that was absolutely amazing. 
that was absolutely mind blowing. And how do we do that? Well, we make sure that we fulfill these five C's. So we've got coolness factor. We need to make sure that the environment, that the entire setting is cool. And now we've pretty much had that since the beginning. The players are going off to go and fight a Cracker Lich and its Lich Master in the middle of the ocean above the pit of Golgur. It doesn't get much more dramatic than that. So when I was making the Kraken map, or at least when I was sending the details off to Dungeon Fog, who have very kindly made the map for us, when I was doing that, I needed to make sure that it wasn't just run up the side of a Kraken and then fight the Lich. That's not cool. That's very, very, very boring. So what I've done is I've said, OK, let's look at how do we make battle on top of an undead creature exciting. That means we've got combat, so there's definitely combat involved. We've got traps, so there should be some traps involved. And the traps are particularly nasty. They are, they are, let's just say I hope that they don't fall into those traps. Because when you think about you have a giant undead creature that is 300 foot long and there are traps, what kind of traps could you have? I'm not going to say open sores, but I'll leave you to think about that for a little bit. Then, of course, the final battle with Havast himself. Lahuna has now the assembled spear of uh, Kentra Aha, which, if plunged through his chest, will cause him to be destroyed. Now, the, 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 the requirements for that happening are that someone wielding the spear, possibly Luna, gets up to Havast and engages with that. You go, okay, cool. All right, that's absolutely fine. Chaos and Calm. Chaos and Calm talks to the fact that there needs to be a lot of things happening at once and a calm moment. That calm moment, I believe, will be the battle with Gankari, where Lahuna is facing off, showing us what a mighty paladin she might be. Jagzi, hopefully, will be involved in that. But I'm very cognizant of the fact that at the moment we have a split party where part of that party is invisible. And that's Flick and Lahuna. So I need a way in order to figure out how Flick and Lahuna can get to the Kraken, because that's their goal, and how the rest of the party can get there as well, but make sure that the timing seems right. So that means I need to call on some old friends that we seeded long ago in order to slow down Lahuna and Flick from getting to Gankari. And who better than to make a cameo from one of the very first victims of the ghosts of Saltmarsh. So there will be undead that the crew and that Lahuna and specifically that Flick recognize aboard the Kraken. They will be slowing them down. That's my purpose there. Now, we also need to have, um, in the chaos, we need to bring together all of our storylines. We need to wrap it up, as they say. So let's look at the open storylines. Salt has a massive open storyline with Gellin Primewater. It is left hanging in the air. We need to resolve it. That's easy enough done for what I have planned. I'm going to have Gellin Primewater arrive on his ship, the Primewater, and he will accost Salt directly. Again, remember those two sailors who were marooned on that island? They went back to Gellin and told him exactly what was going on. At the same time, that's the one storyline that needs to conclude. So we're going to wrap that one up. I also have a very small storyline with Indigo and Scallon, uh, Scarron, I should say, um, Scarron Wave Chaser, who threatened to murder poor old Indigo long ago. I could put him on the same ship as Prime Water, and at the moment I'm doing that, but I'll read the scene and see if that actually needs to take and actually needs to, to come through. That wraps up those two. Jagzy doesn't necessarily have a long-running story that's been going through. His character backstory with his Nan, we never really got to explore it too much because there wasn't enough time, sadly. So he doesn't have a huge amount to wrap up there. What he does, though, have is the capacity to influence and save any one of his crewmates. So I'm quite happy for him to be involved there as the warrior champion. Flick, of course, has got issues with everybody and everything 
but principally he has issues with the first captain of the admiral's first rate ship the dominance if you recall uh, there were some issues there but they weren't really fully developed snicked also uh, i should say snicked flick's first victim is definitely going to make a comeback because that will bring us full circle in terms of that open story about Flick causing him to die. And of course, Lahuna's story with her mother needs to wrap up, but that's not an antagonistic one. That's simply just concluding it. So we need all of that to come together. And I actually need that. I need the second chance and I need the players, characters to actually stand a chance of engaging Havist and not having to fight that giant Kraken. So I'm going to bring together the fleet, which originally I had planned to be assembled by the PCs. They never got that far, so I'm going to bring that fleet together, again using those two lost crewmen who uh, survived on the island, as well as Lahuna's mother, who got news from the lizard folk a lot earlier. And already the lizard folk have been talking about an alliance with the merfolk. So there's lots of stuff that's been built in already that can establish all of this stuff. And that brings in the love interest for Indigo, which I think could be quite nice. So lots of things being brought together. Lots of things being brought together to make sure that this finale is as epic as possible. Now, there are some questions. Uh, Draco McDragon says, are the players still level 2? No, they're level 3. They are level 3. This is a failing of mine. And I admit it absolutely, openly and honestly. I should have had them level up after the Pit of Golgur encounter. But because they were... They, they went straight out of Pit of Golgo into Lahuna's mother encounter and left that encounter at the same time. It doesn't feel right to me for them to level up. Also bearing in mind that even with using milestone leveling, we have only been playing for a couple hours in truth, 24 hours in total, which is not a long uh, long time if you if you are looking at a standard role playing game of four hours or so. So. I feel that they should have been at an extra level, but at the same time, whether they're level 3 or whether they're level 4, there's not a huge difference in terms of power. That Yes, they get a stat or a feat, which could come in handy, but it's too late now. We are rolling in terms of this, but also I think players need to be given a little bit more warning than just, oh, you all level up quickly. There needs to be building and there needs to be some kind of plan there. So that is definitely on me. They should have leveled up, absolutely. All right. Any other questions? Uh, Saibai says, how do you plan for whether weird or random thing that you know your players are going to do? Well, Saibai, that's the whole thing. I did not anticipate, I absolutely did not anticipate Lahuna and um, Flick heading towards the Kraken. That was not on my, my plan. I had anticipated them all getting onto the ship and that this episode would be spent working through the plans on how to attack the Kraken. The fact that they're just going headlong into it is absolutely fine. We will watch what happens. I've explained what I'm going to be doing in terms of bringing in as much support as I can to mitigate that entire circumstance and hopefully that will allow the players to continue on their journey. Having said that, if they turn around and they now swim back to the ship for whatever reason, I can certainly just continue with my plans. If for whatever reason, Salt decides to head back to Salt Marsh. Well, I can intercept them with the fleet, which is now moving out under the request of the Admiral that is going to go and engage with this Kraken as well. So I have some options up my sleeve that I can use to try and steer them back towards the conclusion. The biggest difference, of course, here is that we are on the clock. We only have 12 episodes to wrap up. And I think it would be very, very, very frustrating if we didn't conclude the story in our 12 episodes and so there is a big difference between how you would run a home game and how we run this kind of game and I think a lot of people don't realize that is that yes we are running a game and this is how I play in real life I mean when I'm sitting around a table I have all my plans laid out exactly as I have been talking to you the only thing is is that usually there isn't this time pressure in terms of at the 12th episode you are done so there is that pressure, and the players are aware of that as well. So there's a certain amount of uh, shenanigans which is definitely going to happen. I would be foolish not to, by now, anticipate that. But yes, we will try and accommodate as best we can. 
Um, how the heck? Uh, how the heck will the players survive if Flick is on their side? <laughs> yes. How? How will they survive? Uh, will the second season start at level one also, or at a higher level? Says Vaniel One Thousand. Um, I would imagine. I would imagine it's going to start at a higher level. I can't say more than that, but I suspect very, very sincerely it will start at a higher level. Uh, BNA UK says it was Fli uh, it was Flick. How did it not occur to you that he charged towards the Kraken? Flick is not necessarily stupid. He is often curious, and the curiosity will definitely lead to things, without a doubt. Yes. But I didn't anticipate them charging directly towards it without their allies and invisible. That's the real crux of the matter, is that there's no ways that anyone knows where they have gone. That's the real problem. Um, okay, so next one is... Uh, please ensure that Pinky will survive the final encounter. Kaoru will need all of Pinky's tentacles to get the work done for the Project Chaos Kickstarter. Just ran into Myri at the near the Hain Con uh, in Vessel earlier today. What a nice young lady. Well, there we go. Yes, I'm, Myri is an absolutely lovely, lovely, lovely person. And yes, uh, Kaoru will be busy and we will try and keep Pinky alive, but the chances are small. Uh, Tiger Moss 81. I'm new here and trying to understand the game. I wish that there was a game like Dungeons and Dragons here in Egypt where I'm getting in love with it. Well, um, absolutely. Um, you will, or oh, possibly you could find people online to play with Tiger Moss 81. Dungeons and Dragons is widespread. I wouldn't be surprised if you would find players in, in Egypt. Um, so have a look there. I think I know of a few as well. But uh, good luck with that. Uh, it's a lot of fun to play. Uh, okay, another question, seven-sided. With so many story threads still open, do you anticipate leaving some of them open for season two? That is a very good question to ask um, in so far as all of the story threads. I'm going to try and wrap up as many as I can, whether or not that is because season two is set somewhere else or because it continues and goes to Saltmarsh doesn't matter. The idea of running 12, 12, 12, A, that's how long a season is when you sign up with Wizards of the Coast uh, to run a game for them. But also wrapping up these storylines, if I can finish them up now in a way that is satisfactory but also brings incredible tension and drama to the scene, I think that's a better choice than leaving anything hanging that cannot be resolved. Of course, stuff that doesn't make sense to be resolved, like, for example, uh, Jagged Jaws Nan, that story, that doesn't, uh, that's still hanging, the marriage of Lahuna, that won't necessarily get wrapped up. But those are not the story threads that were initiated at the beginning of this adventure. So I like to wrap up the story threads at the beginning of the adventure, uh, well, that started at the beginning of the adventure, at the end of the adventure, so that it is a nice neat little ball we can put that aside and if the second chance sails again in season two then the characters are free to grow and move forward rather than to still have these threads from behind if i was running a giant campaign if i had an indefinite amount of seasons or episodes i would still try and wrap it up in terms of these threads gellin prime water has been a pain we are now done i feel that justice must be served that's just me personally uh, right. I'm very glad. That's a very kind comment of you, uh, Seven Sided, uh, about the best RPG stream I've seen. I really do appreciate that. I'm sure the players will as well when I tell them. Uh, da -da -da -da. No other questions. All right. No other questions. That's absolutely fine. We've got six minutes to go. All right. So something else that we need to be very, very aware of is that we need to conclude so that won't be in today's episode. I'm letting you know right now, it is unlikely that in two hours they will be able to conclude what has been set up and what has been planned. Players are going to talk to each other. Well, the characters are going to talk to each other. There's going to be lots of dialogue going on. So I anticipate that it won't end today. It will end next week. But, and this is the important thing, and so often uh, new GMs will make this mistake. The 
big bad monster will die, but will actually escape or will continue on to return again. It's a rookie mistake. And what it does is it just prevents your players from getting a sense of conclusion and a satisfaction. So I always say when you end, end. Let other stuff trail in the background that will take you on to your next adventure. It, it, it helps us compartmentalize stuff. It helps us just lock away chapters and things. And I think that's, that's very important. Uh, so yes, definitely, definitely we must conclude. So that's what we're going to be doing. Any other questions? There's some discussion going on about Fantasy Grounds and Roll20. Yes, absolutely. If you're not looking for any of that, you can look at rpgtablefinder.com. Um, that's a free service for finding groups. You can have a look there as well. And that's got people all over the world. So yes, lots and lots and lots of things. I see uh, Helvania says the Circle of Life Pinky Edition. I like that. <laughs> I can just see Flick holding Pinky up at the edge of the precipice to all of the other octopi and then dropping him or something. Or he gets eaten by a seagull. Um, I can certainly, I can certainly see that. Uh, Tashio Calderi says, is that spear in the background supposed to be the artifact? Oh, this one here. Um, it would have been nice if that was the case, but when I was putting this background together, apart from my microphone arm, which I hate seeing in shot, um, when I was putting this together, I was just sort of putting together treasure and stuff. Uh, there's lots of, of different artifacts and relics in here. You can see there's a bottle of a uh, potion perhaps or a rum bottle i'm not sure anyway um yes I, I i i i assembled stuff when i whenever i get ready for a show that's got a very specific setting i sort of put stuff together i said okay this to me is very atlantean very merfolkian of course you can see the giant kraken in the background so yeah i try and sort of gather stuff to inspire me why was the artifact broken up last time says grizzles well that's a good question why was the artifact broken up last time? It's a hundred years that has passed. Not long for a sea elf or for a um, regular elf, I suppose. Why was it broken up? We may never know. Gadra would be the one who perhaps knows. It could also be, and this often happens, is once the Black Tide was defeated, those who had helped forge the artifact in the first place split it up so that it forced all of the different kingdoms to unite again to unite the artifact to defeat a common enemy. That's entirely possible, and that's the excuse I'm going with. So I like these kinds of questions, though, and I think that as a GM, when you ask these kind of questions, don't get frustrated or feel as if it's something that oh, I have to have an answer for because otherwise it's... Think about it and look for solutions and explore different options so that you can, yeah, so that you can discover something and learn something new. Um, uh, Rubik, you are only on episode seven. Yes, I would suggest uh, just uh, having a catch up there. Uh, I see Adamal says it could also be that the artifact is a weapon that they feared everyone using outside of this context so it was broken up again a lovely alternative absolutely absolutely valid so yes I think so many different options um, and absolutely none of them wrong it, it, it's, it's great that's why I love this game I absolutely adore this game for that very reason uh, why can't the ancient artifact ever be a 0.44 magnum says white tiger <laughs> 225 yeah um i think because they you know uh don't exist but if you read the Vulcan series by Thess Gorkowski, they certainly could uh there's quite an interesting um story in terms of the weapons uh, lineage so anyway um, all right, so Saibai, you're only on episode three. You're going to binge at work tonight. Well, I hope it entertains you as much as it entertains me whilst playing it. Anyway, we've reached the end of our session, so hope I I have no idea. You know my plans. I wish I knew my players' plans, but that would spoil the fun. So I hope you're all ready as we journey into the ghosts of Saltmarsh.
We fought them in the air, on land and under the waves. But it wasn't enough. Brave folk banded together, united in hope and allied in goal. But it wasn't enough. The black tide brought with it an evil of terrible power. Darkness sank into the hearts of us all. For we knew, as above in the skies we lost, so on land we'd lose. And our only hope was below. But it wasn't enough. Forces unknown to us were at work. And in those dark days it found purchase wherever it touched. For our best wasn't enough. Yet, a single light burns in the dark night, and it might be enough. Hello and welcome to today's show. It's, uh... Well, we're heading into our grand finale, and uh, that means all kinds of exciting things. Two episodes left. Joining me, of course, is the ever-impressive Michael from Australia. How are you doing, Mike? G'day, guys. I'm doing fantastic. I cannot wait for today's episode. Uh, I feel like I'm going to have uh, an awesome time battling with great beasts, uh, not being able to fix my ship, and uh, hopefully, uh, again, doing everything I can to fail at anything I'm actually supposed to be good at. Uh, right. Okay. Because that <laughs> that's been the intention the whole time. Fun. It has not <laughs> been. It has not just been bad rolls. <laughs> terrible things. Uh, dear, dear. Yeah, if you intend to fail, do you succeed? Oh, that's it. That's it. It's, uh, it's brilliant. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's Some it. That's smart it. I tend to keep bear. Right. Yes. Uh, Tara, hard, how are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> that well, hey? Okay, great. Good. Nice to get an update there. Uh, <laughs> uh, Captain Salt, are you prepared? Is 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 uh, are the hatches battened? Are the decks swabbed? Are the uh, think... mizzen spliced? I think me, Jenny, the player, is more prepared than Victor is at this point, because Victor no, still has no idea what's going on. No one's told him anything. Uh, so we'll, we'll see what happens. Hopefully, you know, we'll, some, we'll work at something. I do want to say I'm getting a little bit of a cold, so if I have to blow my nose on stream, I apologize. I'll turn the sound off, I promise. But and Just aim away from the camera, too, because that could just be awkward. <laughs> yes. Uh, no, we're on green screen. It'll be fine. <laughs> uh, I'll try to, like... So, so like if i do this you know what's going on <laughs> myri how are you how is germany i'm actually pretty cold considering that we're supposed to have summer but otherwise i'm absolutely fine and totally looking forward to this episode and hoping that we can turn the ship around literally and <laughs> maybe not ram it into a kraken again <sighs> i'd very much like to keep it in one in one piece for a little bit longer that, that so. would be nice. <laughs> one, 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 one more session, at least. <laughs> How long can a ship take to sink? At least one session. Yes, um, <laughs> at least one session. <laughs> finally, our ever-stunning mermaid. How are you doing, Janet? We're all going to die! Yay! <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, I'm doing great. Uh, weather here in England is rainy and horrible, so you know, you know, it's Sounds a British summer. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, so exciting things happening. I can't wait to know what's going to happen. I'm slightly worried, but it's fine. I've got a flick backpack. I'm invisible. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> I don't want to flick backpack. Uh, you do now no, until you see what Flick does, and then you probably won't. I'm assuming. I'm assuming he might be a perfectly nice piece of luggage. Um, it's, it's, I, I, I don't know. 
Best luggage. Hard to tell. We have to throw some love. We don't have to throw. I hate that sentence. We don't have to throw. We want to throw some love to our amazing sponsors, Dungeons and Dragons, for bringing us to you on their channel. Absolutely, thank you, Dungeons and Dragons. Awesome game, best RPG out there. Also, World Anvil, WorldAnvil.com. Uh, all of the character sheets can be found in the Heroes section, as well as the World section can be found there, uh, where you can get some uh, maps and all sorts of cool and wonderful stuff. Check them out and dungeon fog all the maps were made on dungeon fog there is one map tonight that i cannot wait to show you because oh no. it is very seldom that you get a map and you go ooh, ooh. i mean i get excited about maps i do i do i i, I will geek out on maps but there are some maps where you go ooh. Anyway, and of course, Fantasy Grounds, who will be providing us with all kinds of cool and wonderful stuff. Not only have they helped build the encounters for tonight, but they also will be hopefully providing natural 20s for the players and natural ones for the NPC monsters. Or the other way around, either way. And of course, uh, yeah. yeah, well, there we go. Let us now descend back into the watery waves that one as we found ourselves standing on the deck of the second chance captain salt indigo is nearby yes. and there is a cry there's something in the sky captain oh god's preserve us and what? there's something in the water captain yes i know that and the kraken's still there captain Yes, thank you! <sighs> it's coming from every direction. I look up and I try to see what it's talking about. Mm, would you and Indigo please give me dexterity saving throws? Oh no, what? <laughs> <Okay>. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> I might have failed that one. <laughs> you might have failed that one. Yes, yes. You may have failed that one. There is a loud, no, Daphne, and you are rugby tackled, Indigo, by poor Lieutenant Tarquin, who leaps out of the way as his Pegasus comes clattering down onto the deck directly where you were, and he rolls with you twice on the deck before landing right on top of you. Oh, um, oh, it's you. Hello. <laughs> You're not very good at this flying thing. He looks over his shoulder at Daphne, who's sort of standing there, busy folding her large wings back into place. It's actually Daphne. I think she's got an inner ear infection or something. What are you that doing is very, here? That is a very good question. Ah, yes. Uh, well, um, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, you, uh, well, that is to say, um, oh, uh, oh, I'm awfully sorry, he says as he tries to get off of you, Indigo. Uh, I, I didn't mean that, uh, at all. Um, okay, Not? <clears throat> yes. He stands and salutes, uh, to you, Captain Salt. <clears throat> On behalf of His Majesty's Royal Navy, um, I'm here to uh, inform you that um, uh, your ship has been seconded into the human fleet. <clears throat> Why? Captain Salt. Um, because you are an able-bodied ship and you are in the vicinity of the naval action. Seconded? Why? Why? What's, what do you want us to do? Ah, um, he looks out over at the Kraken. Did you notice that? That's why we're here. Ah, well, then, uh, your secondment is uh, going to be easy. Uh, you are ordered to regroup with the fleet and immediately begin preparations for our assault. All right. I, I sort of I lean in towards Indigo and I mutter, I really didn't expect the, the human kingdom's fleet to be actually effective at something. Of any use? Yeah. Indigo yeah. gets up. Tell your commanding whatever that, of course, uh, Captain Salt and the whole crew of the Second Chance will do their best to make this right. Yes. 
that is what we're going to do. We just need to pick up a few people. Uh, right. We'll re we have a few people in the water. We'll regroup as soon as we've sorted that out. But do not worry, they're not human, they're water people. You can see his brow not in confusion. Ah! Uh, oh! Oh, I see, yes. Uh, right, well, uh, in that case, um, you should probably be aware as well that um, the, uh, the, 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 the fleet uh, is, is doing a joint operation and you should not fire upon any... Uh, other ships that you might see, which traditionally you may have fired upon, as we are now in an alliance. With who, exactly? Uh, well, uh, th Her Majesty the uh, Grand High Scale of Quelt Ux uh, has well, sent several yeah. war galleys uh, to join the fleet. Um, there is a contingent of uh, merfolk minbay class uh, destroyers that have yeah, joined us under Ambassador there. Pescarian. Um, also down there. Yes. And then there are, uh, well, uh, to be perfectly honest with you, there are, I need you to make a um, acrobatics check, please, Lahuna. Oh, no. <laughs> Lahuna or Indigo? Lahuna. Okay, sure. Okay, I'm about Ooh, to just give myself transitions. Painfully. Acrobatics, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good roll. There you go. And dirty 20. Whoop. You are swimming as fast as you can towards this large undead kraken when suddenly you have to put all fins out and stop dead in the water because this long sinuousy construction of fins and weed and uh, little paddles busy flapping wildly and coral and it looks like some wood um, as it bursts past you and continues to burst past you with these little pods sort of hacking, hanging on with one another. As you are, are floating there, you can see out of the windows of these little pods, little blue faces all watching as they shoot past. Um, one of them, right at the end of this long serpent-like thing, there's a little harpoon gun that rotates around with one of these blue creatures inside a, a it looks like a bubble of sorts and um it's sitting on the guns busy training them around wildly trying to see if it can find you uh it does not as it shoots past it's your people it's your look they're so small and blue do i do i recognize any of the ships uh, any of the this is without pods? a doubt a current kite it is a ship used traditionally by seabolds to navigate around the high seas. Which uh, which clan this is, you're not entirely sure. So it's not my family? It, they shot past too fast. Okay, sure. I'm just going like, oh, oh, uh, yeah, oh, oh. I don't know how useful they'll be. <laughs> uh, yeah. We could make friends. You don't sound very sure. Well, it's always a bit of a 50-50, really. <laughs> um, friends, okay. enemies... Um, yeah, we could give it a go. All right, but I think this is great because then Cracky is going to be like a little bit distracted with, with the, the big ship with the blue hangy things and the tentacles and the pods and the things and the other things and the other things everywhere. That I'm distracted. I think Cracky will be distracted too. So Cracky's going to be distracted and then we can just and then and then stab 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 uh-huh that's the plan <laughs> yes i follow all right okay yeah. uh okay. do you want me to drop invisibility then no 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 cracky no. cracky will be distracted by all the thing yeah oh i see carry on round behind now okay. onwards yes onwards 
Jagged Jaw, whilst these two lunatics are sailing off um, with their plan. No, I think it's a lovely plan. I, I take it back. <laughs> it's uh, a it, lovely I, plan. Yes. Yeah. It's the, a plan. The, the pun didn't work so well. Get it, lunatics? No? No one got it? <laughs> I'm wasted. I'm wasted. Oh, yeah. Now? <sighs> Jagsy, you break the surface of the water i assume well are you going up to the surface because you are left all alone with five minbar um <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going Shipping up to the into. surface um jagger jaws definitely lost track of uh flick and lahuna and um last he knew they were heading straight towards the kraken um while jagger jaws more than happy to uh, accompany the two of them to try and keep them safe uh, having lost sight of them, he's got no way of knowing if he's caught up with them, if he's going to be literally facing off the Kraken alone. So he's going to go and regroup with uh, with Victor and Indigo and try and tell them uh, what the other two have planned uh, and hopefully give some <laughs> give some backup <laughs> on that front. Uh, so breaching the surface, uh, Jagger Jaw's eyes sort of adjust for a moment to the uh, to the. Uh, sunlight? Sunlight? Are we in the day? Yeah, it's uh, afternoon. There's a storm approaching. Yep, I'll um, and I'll I'll scan around to see um, what vehicles are nearby where I am. You can see the uh, Minbay ships of the uh, Merfolk nearby, slightly submerged. They are taking point off of the second chance. In the distance, you can see a very large human ship making full sail towards you. You recognize it as the Admiral's first great ship. There are several Pegasi circling above that. And beyond that, you smell before you see. It's colossal. It looks like it's already sinking because it's listing heavily to one side. And uh, it's definitely trailing out... Uh, trailing out a vast quantity of junk it, <laughs> it it's you haven't come across them often because usually when they enter into shock on territory they just get eaten but this is without a doubt a goblin colony ship Ooh. <laughs> huh. hmm. like a floating city kind of deal yes all right. Well, like, um, like, like this boat floating boat. dumpster. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Although they wouldn't call it a dumpster. Yeah, this this can't be bad. This happens all the time, you know. People forging alliances with little tiny garbage people. I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't be bad thing happening here. That's what you're saying. <sighs> uh, and I'll um I'll Some start swimming day. towards the um this the second chance uh, as quick as I can. All right, not a problem. You get up onto the second uh, chance's deck and uh, Salt, the lieutenant, finishes his list of everybody who's involved. And the dwarves have sent two Thordane class ships. It's the last of the last of the kind, actually, in the Azure Sea. Um, so, yes, um, I'm... I put I'm, up a, a hand into his face to wait and then I, I, I sort of rush over and I give uh, Jagajaw a great big hug. Um, ah, it's so it was... good to see you, boy. You all right? Um, you good? What happened uh, down there? Well, uh, <laughs> I don't know where to begin. How about we start with, um, well, I believe that Luna and Flick are currently charging at the, uh, the giant kraken over there, which, you know, we clearly are mounting an army to fight against, armed with a pointy stick. Pointy stick? They are, are they are armed with our one thing that could hurt the black tide, right? That thing, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, well, where do we need them back? For for yeah. several reasons. I want them back, and I want the artifact back. I'd like to tell you I knew where they went. They were right next to me one second, and the next thing I knew, poof, gone, vanished. Well, I'm going yeah, to well. show them where we are. And oh, I'm pretty sure they know where we are. Um, but uh, it was um, it and was uh, oh. moonbeam. <laughs> so suddenly there's a forty foot column of silver <laughs> light, probably also going into the sea, marking 
marking a spot slightly off the bow of the second chance and she hopes that th this lot of moonlight out in the sea is going to get noticed by Lehuna who just rolled perception. Oh no! Flip. And did a really bad roll. Three is the number of perception uh, that I have. I was going to say, Three I'm not really paying attention to anything and I'm also closing my eyes and having a little short rest. <laughs> uh, so, um, you can still give, give me the... a roll, give me a roll, give me a roll with disadvantage since you, you closed your eyes, but you never know. <laughs> Dear Lord. Okay! <laughs> um... It can't be worse. It's worse. Oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> 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 why, why did I say <laughs> that? Um, don't look, they well, bind! They you know wouldn't notice, sadly. Well, um, I don't think it's just about charging at the creature. Lahuna seemed to bump into someone that she knew that uh, belonged to the merfolk, and it, it, it rattled her straight up. Uh, it her was mother. Uh, Her mother, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, you met her? No, we met her captain. Right, Look, right. We have a lot of ships that are planning to attack this thing. You saying Luna has a weapon that can hurt it? I'm saying that Lahuna's in the line of fire, but sure, that's what we can take away. That's what I'm asking you right now. I, I, I'm sorry to interrupt, but you say you have a weapon that can actually harm this under- I was asking him that as you interrupted. Yes, yeah, shut up. Yes, sorry, Captain, sorry. Wait, uh, yes, sorry. Mm. Yeah, no, she has the weapon with her right now. Uh, as far as I can tell, they've gone invisible and are uh, trying to stab it. But, um, yeah, she'll need help. She'll need to at least make sure that the uh, that this creature's tied up dealing with the army. Yes. Uh, you know, uh, so... Uh, You're saying distraction. What's your call, Captain? Are you suggesting that we throw thousands of lives at this creature just so Luhuna, who's probably rushing off with a half a brain on something like a plan, might succeed? I'm saying these morons are about to launch themselves at the Kraken anyway, right? That moron is my father, I'll have you know. Right. That doesn't speak well for you, young man. Um, Victor, have you ever thought about putting leashes on your crew? Yes, many times. The point is that if they can be enough of a distraction at range, because we've seen what that thing does to any ship that comes even close. Your father has seen that as well. Uh, and so, I'm sorry, Cap sorry Captain. Sorry, Captain. I don't. I, I do apologize for interrupting, but I'd like to point out that Lahuna is very, very fast. Yes. We need to make a decision now. Yes, that's what I'm doing. Why do you people keep interrupting me? Look, tell your father and all the other ships to keep it engaged. At range, don't let it get any closer. Don't let it get close enough to rip things apart. I'm sure your dear old father knows exactly why. Keep moving out of its way, keep firing at it, keep it busy. Right, right. Um, well, I rather thought, uh, well, actually he puts his hand into his pocket and he pulls out this black disc, which he hands to you. Uh, you could possibly tell him that yourself, actually. What um, is this? An uh, arcanogram. Uh, it will allow you to, to, to communicate with the uh, fleet. I hand it to Indigo. Uh, do I need to do something to activate it? Uh, it mainly mention the name of the person you're trying to communicate uh, with. Uh, in, in, in this case, it would uh, be Admiral um, Tarquin. Tarquin, yeah. Admiral Tarquin. There is a brief moment, and then this collection of little symbols lights up on the disc, and this little image of Admiral Tarquin appears in hmm. a sort of magical blue light shimmering every now and again. This is Admiral Tarquin. This is Indigo Dio Medea. I am the surgeon of the Second Chance, and I'm speaking for Victor Sword, Captain Eostra, Captain of the Second Chance. First of all, your son is well and with us. Ah, Second, yes. We met outside of the city hall, again. didn't we? I you think so. Yes, fella. you all look the same to me. Um, oh, yes, definitely. You. You, you kind of 
Victor, what was I about to say? Oh yes, stay away from the Kraken. That is what I was going to say. L because... Let me let me talk to him. Y yes. Uh, oh, one one thing, Victor and um, Admiral. One thing uh, no one has mentioned so far, and that I think I should mention, is that all of this started in Salt Marsh. And yes. I I mean, it literally started in Salt Marsh. The no. dark magic. Yes. No, we know the, the statues and the dark magic. We know. Yes. But right now we have a more direct issue. Please, let me have that thing for a second. Thank you. Hi. Captain Salt. Yes. I assume my son has informed you as to the requirements of your vessel. Yes, he has. And I'm telling you that we're busy. I'm saying that one of my crew has a weapon that can hurt that thing, and she's currently on her way whether I want her to or not, to take it out. And that what she could use right now is a distraction. Basically, I'm thinking we hit that thing with everything we've got, keep it busy, keep it pissed off at whatever isn't close to it, so that she has a chance. Captain Salt, would you agree to coming aboard the Dominant so that we might discuss this in person. I feel that this requires far more finesse than shouting at one another across the ocean. Right now, we, we don't have time. There is no point in enacting any kind of plan if one has not actually planned it. Well, Halwa's sake, you're in charge, aren't you? It sounds what, more what like you're you in charge, Captain, if you're holding the only weapon that you claim will be able to harm this thing. I'm not holding it. That's the point. It's heading towards the Kraken right now, and I can't stop it. Yes. I would Leaches. rather have you here on the Dominance if it uh, won't be too much of an inconvenience. Yes, well, I'd rather have 20,000 gold and a new coat. But we can't always get what we want. We are going to follow that damn thing in its wake to see if we can do anything to help out my crewmen. You see him turn away for a moment. Give me a wisdom, a, will, a wisdom saving throw. Oh no! As he turns back, the last thing you hear him say is, "I'm not accustomed to being told no, Captain." And then the whole world just fades white. Indigo oh, no. and Jagsy, you watch as the captain just vanishes from the deck. Oh no! Lieutenant Tarquin turns to you. He did try and say no to Admiral Tarquin. Tarquin, uh, uh, he, he's not... He, he, are you... <laughs> just a moment. Are you able to teleport away? No, I'm not. Uh, well, I Very mean, good. Uh, I'm, I'm grabbing him. Him. No, wait, you must understand. Uh, this, this is not my choice. I didn't... It was it Victor's what? choice to get abducted? No, but it was entirely Victor's choice to agree to go willingly, willingly or not. <laughs> He'll probably be sent back. <laughs> probably. Um, Jagajo will look at Indigo. Then you are going to probably be sent back. On Daphne, I hope. Oh, and I'd never heard Daphne. Why would I? <laughs> oh, good. Well, there is Jagadro, that. Jagadro smiles with a big wide grin. Hey, Indy. I think I've got an idea on how to make this uh, big old army... Start shooting towards the Kraken. Uh, yes. <laughs> does it have one to of do with little... it? Yeah, I'll, um, yeah, it does. Uh, I'm going to, um, basically now tie, um, this, this poor fellow to the, uh, the top of our crow's nest. Or at least I'm going to instruct people to do so. <laughs> <laughs> then give the... Uh, the, well, then give the order for us to um, to sail. Indigo towards... is going to intervene. Oh, oh, come now, come on, you'll be fine. I'm just taking a little hostage, little tiny hostage. Tiny one. I... We usually don't tie hostages to the crow's nest. That's yes, true. Remember what happened don't... last time? You forgot the poor fella up there in. Well. Okay, look, that was that one time, okay? That was the one time, and only because I didn't realize that they needed to drink and eat. Um, but, but this time will be different, I promise. 
I feel as if we've, something's gone awfully wrong. I thought that you had agreed to being in the fleet. I don't understand. Um, we are we are special. Also, <laughs> also, you, you stole of, our captain, is what? Yes, and you said we are now part of the human fleet. Do we look human to you? <laughs> Do you have a first officer on board? Yeah. Um, no, she's no longer on board. Second actually, officer? Right now, she's out there swimming full speed at a dead kraken. <laughs> um, right, yes, okay. Who would um, be the second have, officer? Would that be you? We have a second yes, that would be That would be me. Yes. That would be you, yes, right. So mm. here's your second officer, you can talk to him. <laughs> your captain agreed to be part of the fleet before he was taken away. That means technically you have to follow human law, and I'm fairly certain it includes not tying lieutenants who are merely messengers uh, to crow's nests. <laughs> Specifically. <laughs> Is that right? Yes, probably. Hopefully. Is that right, Indy? <laughs> I have no idea. Human law is very strange. Where's the nearest human? That would Alad. be... Uh... Alad, where are you? <laughs> <laughs> well, Adrian so... sits back yeah, down going, and Alad going... comes forward. <laughs> yes, sir. You're going to get legal legal advice from Alad. Well, he yep. was an officer of the law, technically. All oh, right. Say yeah. that again. Alad, translate. Is this true? The lieutenant repeats his desperate appeal to not be tied to the crow's nest to a lad. A lad listens, thinks, <laughs> I think it's true, probably. Yeah. Unless he committed a crime, he shouldn't be punished for it. Well, mm. he, he did fly dangerously close to a vessel. Uh, in full motion, and Excuse he me. put me in danger well. because he basically rent me when he was landing. You what? He he kind of knocked me over with his flying horse. A lad oh, next thing you'll tell me that he didn't ask the permission to come aboard either. Is it true that you were engaged in reckless flying, sir? <laughs> He says as he looks at the... <laughs> the lieutenant looks at the two of you. You know what? Perhaps, perhaps better to just tie me to the crow's nest, actually. I, 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 I might be safer there. Good choice. Luna, I'll you run. and, and uh, Flick are now quite a distance away from where you previously were, uh, under the water. Uh, do I get a, a short rest? Short rest takes an hour. Are oh. you swing for an hour? Uh, no. Yeah, it's 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 going to take you about half an hour before you start arriving at water, which doesn't look safe. It's got a murky, grey look to it. It's almost oily. No, no. Um, what exactly is the plan? So. <laughs> So, do you remember, I told you before, right? Yes, yes. The big but, but, spaceship is going to be like, splash, splash, splash. And then Cracky's going to be like, ooh, I want to play with that. And then we're going to sneak behind. Na, na, na. And then, but, and then with the aha uh -huh stick, we're going to go, stab, 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 stab. And Mr. Squidgy, uh-huh. Yes, but, do, <clears throat> yeah, but yeah. don't we need to um, stab the guy on top? Yeah. Out. How are we going to get on top of a moving kraken? Well, it doesn't move that fast. And it's a bit slippery, but I think that, like, we can do it. Oh, actually, I have a belt that might help you. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you keep swimming. I'll tie it around you. It's a belt of climbing. <laughs> oh, that belt. Amazing. <laughs> you are the best. You are just the best. I know. I, it seems like I have all the magic items. <laughs> That's, how did that happen? That's amazing. Oh, no. oh, 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 but I have something for you. Because oh, I think I'm going to die today. Well, yeah, we're probably going to die, yeah. Well, Gedra said we would, so. Oh, okay. He had a big fist moustache and he looked very serious. Yeah. So I believe him. So That's okay. I'm going to heaven, so it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> I have this. 
Thank you. What Lena is it? holds out a large crystal lobster. I found it in the house, and I was going to give it to you for your birthday, but now I think oh. I'm going to die, so I won't be around for your birthday. So you should have it. But, you know, just because I'm going to die, it doesn't mean that you have to die. And I, when I asked Gedra, he said that you did not have to die. It was only me. Well, and that's you make okay. perception checks, please? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Wow! <laughs> Blinded by the light of the crystal, oh, I nothing. <laughs> Moonbeam strikes her in the face. Whilst you are, <laughs> whilst, whilst you are looking at this crystal lobster that Lahuna is holding up to you, Flick, you realise that there are about twenty-five giant undead sharks directly behind you. Oh. And then you realize, no, it's the facets of the crystal. Ha ha, it's only one giant undead shark behind you. What a relief. <laughs> See, it's like a pretty lobster and it's so shiny and then you can have it and then you like shiny things, so it's perfect. Roll initiative, please. No. Yeah. Oh, no. Um. Do, 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 do. Actually, I think the words you're looking for. <laughs> yep, absolutely. This thing snaps at you, um, Flick oh, no. and Lahuna. It's just trying to bite you. It doesn't realize that you're two separate individuals, so it's going to try and bite you, Lahuna. Um, Can it see us? Oh, you're invisible. That's right. It invisible. swims right past you. My apologies. It, it swims right past you. Whoa, right where did that come from? <laughs> don't, don't make any noise. It Keep seems going. to be circling in this general vicinity. Now that you realize that you are heading deeper and deeper into this black tide, you are seeing a lot more undead creatures slowly swim past. There's a large whale which you actually you realize you swam through as bits of it drift around you. The water is getting definitely very murky. It smells like rotten corpse as you're heading in deeper and deeper. But Luna, you can start to feel already there is something that is causing the currents to behave erratically. It's as if you're swimming behind a pod of dolphins or near a larger whale. When they move, there's a current disturbance. Something inside the black tide is causing this to happen. Do I, I assume I that we're under the water, right, Luna? Yeah, you are. Do I think it might be cracky? Whatever it is, it's big. Sounds like cracky. Hmm. You know, I'm not sure this was the best plan. <laughs> You're telling me this now? I, just, 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 I don't know. Gedra said take the stick and stab the man. Just keep swimming. Okay, just, just swim. <laughs> Captain Salt, you suddenly yes. appear on the deck of the first-rate ship and you can see a rather uh, elderly-looking woman bow as magic flares from her eyes and her fingertips and she steps back, revealing Admiral Tarquin. He adjusts his jacket. Right, Captain, I'm sorry for bringing you here, but you're quite right. Time is of the essence. Now, you claim that one of your crewmen has a weapon that can um, defeat this undead monstrosity? Yes. Right. And that in order for them to do that, they need to what exactly? Get onto the thing and stab the lich that's riding it. How are they planning on doing that exactly? Last time I checked, it was a uh, 300 foot long undead kraken. You're asking me this as if I have any idea what that woman is doing. She went down under the water to get some kind of artifact or something, and then suddenly one of them comes back up and says, oh, they're heading towards the kraken. They've got a weapon. And now then I have to deal with that and I have to deal with the fact that she's probably going to die and we might lose the only weapon we have against this thing. And 
do I risk the rest of my crew for this? And suddenly you appear and make me legally obligated to do what you want instead when you have a lot of other ships at your disposal that are not as crucial as mine. Sorry, I'm a little upset right now. I'm trying, I'm working on that. But the person who helps me is the one currently heading to the Kraken. You're so if she dies... Give me, Captain. But I was under the impression that that vessel was owned by a civilian in Saltmarsh. He quite happily allowed us to commandeer your vessel. Uh, if there has been some confusion, I apologize. Now, He's a crook. You are also He's a civilian, a so a I understand. He's a crook and he stole the ship from me. It's right. my ship. And if we survived this, I'd be more than happy to help you take him down. Whatever evidence you need, ah. I can get it. Right. Well, then I should probably inform you that his ship uh, is just over there. He says, pointing, and you can see a large black-sailed brigantine with the name Primewater emblazed in gold upon its uh, prow. Bust. I didn't think he'd come out here himself. Who's yes. the captain? Who's captaining it? I'm not privy to that information. Now, what You're not privy to that information? If you seconded the ship, if it's a captain in your fleet... Captain, you're a civilian. I appreciate your candor and your honest emotional response to the situation. However, that... Uh, won't serve us at the present moment in time. Your vessel was given to us by Mr. Primewater uh, to complete this operation. It is, by the sounds of things, um, imperative that we help your wayward s crew accompany, uh, accomplish their task. The Queen yes. uh, of the Scale speaks quite highly of you. And your crew. She really? is also in attendance, he says, indicating to the lizard uh, war galleys that are keeping pace with the first oh, rate. Yeah. Give her my regards when you see her. Right, yes, after we have killed this menace yes. to One the Azure Sea. One other thing is that if my first mate does not survive this experience, I think you'll find that the Merfolk ambassador is going to be very, very unhappy. Right. Considering they are connected. She has a vested interest in the survival of my first mate. Right. That's good to know. Right. I suppose you don't know how they plan on getting on top of this Kraken. Do you know how they plan on getting to it? Swimming, I'm imagining. And the heading that they might take to get there? From wherever we were, at the pit, and towards where the Kraken is, I imagine. They're going to travel in a straight line. I honestly have no idea, but if you want my best guess at a heading, then that's it. Right. In which case, then, I think our best bet is to make use of our dwarvish allies. Captain Salt, I propose that we will begin long-range bombardment with the trebuchet batteries that the dwarvish ships have as part of their regular armaments. This will allow us to bombard the creature from about a fifth of a mile away, that should distract it long enough to provide some kind of opportunity, hopefully, for your crewmen to engage. There is, however, a slight risk. Yes, that they hit her. I'm aware. Yes, at that range it's impossible to target specifically where the shot will land. Well, that thing's big and she's pretty small. We're going to have to take that risk, but... You were telling me that your grand genius plan was the exact thing that I suggested to you when we first started talking. Uh, yes, just with more ships.
you should Can understand. Can I go back Captain. to mine now? Yes, probably for the best. Uh, except, what will you do? I'm going to keep as close to the damned thing as I can without attracting its attention. And I'm going to see what I can do about lending her help. And I have a feeling that the Merfolk ships are going to be staying in our wake. Ambassador Pascarian has assured me that the Minbei will respond to whatever orders we deem fit. They don't have long-range capacity, not like our surface vessels, and they have also told me they will not enter into the Black Tide, but I'm sure they will do what is necessary. Guess we'll just see. Yes. I can't read their mind any more than we can read each other's. Yes, unfortunate. Uh, now, the... Yes. All right, Captain. Uh, in which case, then, there is going to be a signal when all ships need to close and engage. In the event that your crew are unable to dispatch the rider of this creature, mm. there will be an order given for all ships to engage, firing everything that they have. We have reliable information that if we target the mouth of the creature, we may very well puncture it, causing enough damage. In the event that we are unable to successfully puncture the creature's surface, our goblin allies assure us that the blaze will be seen from Saltmarsh to Kandar mm -hmm. and from Kandar to Quelt Ux. They have a ability to set water on fire, apparently. This is right. the last recourse that we will take. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Do the lizard folk bring the fire crystals? The Queen assured me that the lizard folk are prepared to do anything necessary to destroy this creature. As you know, their ships are galleys designed to ram into their targets. Upon command of engaging with this creature, the Queen of the Scale will launch a full ramming action, I suppose is the only dis word to describe it, into the flanks of the creature where she has assured us she will cause significant harm or her soldiers will go down fighting. Yes, along with many, many barrels of gnomish fire crystals. I'm sure ramming into the side of that thing is going to be pretty devastating. Yes, that's our best bet. There is one other thing that you should be aware of, Captain. What? We will initiate this final battle within three hours. All right. Why exactly? That is approximately how long it is going to take the goblins to set themselves on fire or something. Right. So that's how long we have? Yes. All right, then. Then I better get back now, then. Right, you are. Uh, he turns to the old woman who winks at you. Uh, Dareth, if you would be so kind. Uh, Captain, Can I, I appreciate your honesty in this matter. Right. Well, we'll see who gets out of this alive. Dareth lifts up her hands and weaves this magic which wraps around you. Everything goes white and suddenly you are back. Right. On the ship. Right before I get teleported off the ship, I make a point to uh, spit a massive loogie onto the deck of the Admiral's ship. All but right. <laughs> That's what you do. And then I get teleported out of there. <laughs> Indeed. Jagsy and um, Indigo, you are on the ship watching as the crew bind poor Lieutenant Tarquin into the crow's nest. <laughs> Or not? I don't know. What what what, what was the final outcome? Um, well, the final outcome is that um, yes, no, he is indeed being being strapped to the mast, um, and uh, the order is being given uh, to start moving the second chance forward towards the kraken. Indigo. Indigo lets Jaxie do Jaxie things and give orders, <laughs> and she walks up to Daphne and uses her natural ability to cast um, speak with animals. Yeah, absolutely. Daphne is Hello. currently standing watching this whole proceeding. Hello, beautiful. Is your name actually Daphne or has the human given you a stupid name? <laughs> Well, 
Well, I wouldn't say it was a stupid name, necessarily. But it isn't my real name, of course, as you so, so, so rightly pointed out. You are a lovely shade of sky. Oh my god, I love her so much. Thank you. <laughs> my name is Indigo Diomedea. I was named for the great wandering bird that the humans call Albatross. And for the colour of the sky. And um, your true name would be? I am Sun on the Cresting Wave. Hmm, what a beautiful name, Sun on the Cresting Wave. Do, do I gather that you are doing the work when you're flying with your partner? Yes, but that is part of our partnership. Would you maybe, if it was about saving the world, take someone else along? So, he doesn't have to? I suppose. He is very excitable and, I think, very kind. I think so, too. And I will make sure he's not going to get hurt, no matter what Jaxie says. Jagajal the Ever-Hungry is the big fishman. The one tying up poor old Taki to the wooden tree thing, yes. He's going to be fine. I'm just asking if I need to go somewhere really quick if you would lend me your wings. Of course. You have been very kind in the past. I would not hesitate. It would be my honour, sunlight on the cresting wave. The horse sort of bows its head. Not so easy with four knees. Hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Oh, Jagajaw. Yeah? Do you, do, you, do you think Lahuna is going to swim in a straight line, or do you think she's going she's going to listen to Flick and do something a little more mischievous and try to avoid detection? Uh, I don't know. Let me ask you. Can you read the minds of a big barrel filled with cats? <laughs> yes. All right. Well, what do you think they would do? At least I can <laughs> talk to them. Usually they say, let me out, let me out. I hate you. Well, I've heard Fox say those things. Um, look, um, knowing my luck, they'll probably head straight for the damn thing. And they've already got some di distance on us. So if I had to guess a heading, uh, I would like to try and guess a heading based on where I was. And a straight line towards the Kraken. Give me a survival just... check. Yeah, but I'll, I'll point roughly in that direction. All right. Give me a survival check to uh, see yep. if you have oriented yourself uh, correctly. Okay. How long does your invisibility last for, Flick? Just out of curiosity. An hour. A nine. A nine. You point and realize wait that's not even in the direction of the kraken so you just no, sort of, maybe it's that no yeah you, when... you do know the kraken is over there it's it's right. it's a big creature on the horizon look at some point or another she'll end up there okay so i'm just gonna steer us that away and if you see her then uh then we're going the right way i guess i mean stark red hair i mean how can you miss it that is true yes I, our paths should converge Aye. All right, come about. We're heading straight for the Kraken, and none of your belly aching, or I'll feed you to the bilge rats. <laughs> I demand more respect than that, please, Mr. Jaggerjaw, <laughs> says Morley standing next to you. No flick oh. mode right now, Morley. But I'm now the no ship's flick. mage. Uh, I'll sort no, of. You are uh, not. I was flick ship's is mage. alive. What? Right. <laughs> When he's not on the ship, that's when I become Flick. <laughs> he ain't on the ship. Yes, this so is... I'm Flick. <laughs> this is too complicated. Jexy, deal with this. <laughs> I, I, grab Molly by the, I grab Molly by the top of the head. This is most inappropriate treatment of a ship's mage. I put him in a barrel. <laughs> this is very, very <laughs> inappropriate. And I slam the lid shut. <laughs> 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 All right. He's so precious. I love him. <laughs> Full ahead. <laughs> oh, 
Oh right, sorry. Uh, I'll take out like a, a, a like a like a pike, and I'll just make an air hole just in case. <laughs> Thank you. You continue sailing directly towards the storm, which is now starting to spatter down rain onto the deck in contempt of your uh, approach. As we dip down below into the waters once again with Lahuna and Flick, you have got to the point now where you're starting to see a vague outline of several particularly massive large tentacles slowly pulling forward this massive creature. You are about 200 feet away from it. It's more of a blackness against the darkness than anything else. The amount of undead swimming around it is getting to the point where it's difficult for you to move forward without having to duck out of the way for fear of actually bumping into some of these things. A lot of these are predatorial animals. There are dolphins, there are seals, every now and again an undead merfolk swims past, their rotting tail no longer shiny and bright as it once was. But that is where you are currently. You have about 15 minutes or so left of your magic. I have a question. Yes. Are the undead interacting with each other? No. They're just circling around this massive body as if as it moves forward, their presence spreads forward with it. Does it... So none of them touch the Kraken itself? Not that you can see. No. Okay. Not from cool. this distance anyway. 200 feet, it is just a vague black silhouette on this dark, dark water. And you are probably 60 foot below the surface. And yet it is as if it was night outside above. It's so dark down here. It's really gross down here. <laughs> um, by the way, uh, I can't keep up the invisibility for much longer. So uh, swim, swim faster. Yeah, um, let's get behind it because because the, then it can't see us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think if we're on it, we're not going to get eaten by sharks. Okay, but I don't know if we touch it, if it knows that we're there or not. No, no. It will think we've just it bumped into something. I, I move close to a tentacle. Give it an experimental poke. As pop. you oh, are no. whispering, <laughs> there is oh, no. this particularly large, very heavy set looking merfolk whose head swivels around and looks directly at the two of you. It oh, no. just has these empty eye sockets and there's a crab that scurries around the one socket busy feeding on the bits that are slowly rotting off of its corpse. Living crab or dead crab? Living crab. And the oh. merfolk raises a very ancient trident and points directly at you, Luna. What are you doing? I'm running away! <laughs> <laughs> Which direction? Just away. Away direction that also leads me towards the back of the Kraken. All right, give me an acrobatics check, please, as you try and zip away from this and not bump into everything that is around you. Yes. I will do that thing. Flick, you can give me a perception check, please. Hmm. Dirty 20. Hmm. Nice. Lahuna nice. bolting nice. through, around, twisting over, under, and a... Yep. Yeah. Ooh. As you as you get to within fifty foot of this one large arm, which must be part of the kraken, flick. There is a figure standing in the water, just at the edge of your vision, standing on the kraken. Under the water. Under the water. Okay. Because the Kraken obviously is under submerged as yeah. well, right? So it's standing on the Kraken under the water. Oh, it, for so there's no part of the Kraken above the water at the moment. Part of the Kraken is, but because okay. it's so big, it spreads out into into the water and submerges down quite far as well. Yeah, yeah, okay. S this figure turns, and for a moment, you could swear it looks like a certain cobble that you once knew. 
before it turns and starts heading higher up into uh, the length of the Kraken. What? Oh, oh no. Oops. What? That's, uh, that's bad. <laughs> <laughs> Who would have thought that murdering someone in one of the first sessions would ever come back to bite you in your scaly little butt? <laughs> <laughs> Flick doesn't say anything, but his inner monologue is... <laughs> oh dear, oh, oh, that's gonna be bad. <laughs> Just urging Luna on. Captain Salt, <laughs> you yes. are in the storm above. Give me a perception check, something doesn't feel right. I'm, I'm back on the ship You are now. indeed back on yeah. the second chance. <laughs> Just Dirty Ooh. 20. we got some lovely numbers coming yes! in tonight. Yes! I'm so happy. We're not, maybe we're going to survive. Maybe. I'm not saying anything yet, but maybe. As you are standing <laughs> watching Jagsy helm the ship, because that's his job now, apparently, uh, you hear this <sighs> and overhead you watch as four very large uh, trebuchet boulders oh. sail overhead and slam into the side of the Kraken. They don't it's seem gone. to bounce off, they just seem to puncture straight in. And wherever they do, this great big cloud of green-grey atmosphere seems to be released from the actual creature itself. Mm. The whole, whole lich undead Kraken its two front tentacles just reach up into the air and start to slowly dance almost, presenting a bigger target for the ships. You realize though, as they're moving through the atmosphere, they, they seem to be gathering electrical energy as lightning seems to be striking into these things. Oh. What are you doing? Um. Uh, <laughs> I'm just gonna. Uh, Admiral Tarquin? The hologram appears. Yes? That Are your people prepared to begin? up for something. We noticed that. We uh, have been rather reliably insure, assured by uh, Ship's Mage that it's probably just a defensive reaction. No, it's not. Look at the lightning strikes. What Look would at you where suggest, they're heading. Captain? What? What would you suggest? I don't know. Evasive maneuvers? I don't know. Right. Some kind of grounding lightning rod? I have no idea. I have never fought anything that shoots lightning before. Noted. Right. Thank you for your opinion, Captain Salt. Maybe get all the magic users to try and, and protect from magic. What the hell? Was, is that Morley in the barrel? I just pushed the I admiral. Think right back now it's in flick. I just put the admiral in my pocket. Um, yes. Right. Whatever. Well, currently uh, he's I, flick. All right. I I walk up uh, to the helm. I said I'll take over. Jagsy, I want you at the front to look out for things in the water, uh, currents, magic, anything like that. Let me know what I'm, what we're going into. Indigo, okay. keep an eye on that lightning, will you? I don't like the look of it. I will take a and look at it. Anything else that thing's doing. But I won't be able to protect us from it. I can't do anything about it. Oh, no, no, but... I, I pry open the, the <laughs> barrel lid and Molly I, I looks reach up in. You. I, I reach in and I pull them up. What? I, I'm the ship's mage. I could probably help against that. I put him back in the barrel and then I, I put the put the lid back on. Oh no, it's okay, it's a little life. <laughs> Actually, uh, Captain, I, I take over the hell. Uh, Captain, your idea on the, the lightning rod's not a bad one. I might be able to pit, put something together just before we uh, we get into the storm. Go for it. Do it. Indigo, then you go to the bow. Keep an yes. eye out for things. And also, Indigo is already walking towards the bow backwards. And also, if they need me uh, sunlight on the cresting waves has agreed to take me flying what who 
What? What did we? Oh, the we Pegasus. Did... The Pegasus. Oh right. I thought we'd be picking up more crewmen. Right. I'm awfully sorry to interrupt," says Lieutenant Tarquin, still tied to the mast. "What are you doing? Who did that, Jaxie? Um, well, Jaxie. look. To be, to be fair, I thought he kidnapped you, and uh, he was what was it again, a lad? Reckless, fr re re reckless flying. flying. Reckless that. flying with endangerment of the public, contrary to Charter Number Five, Article." 14 of the general ordinances of salt marsh and general surrounds as edicted by lord haversard uh, the fifth you have a good memory lad well but they told please... me to learn it so i learned it yeah okay great look i'm back now so please cut him down well you know with the uh <clears throat> mr prime ugly face uh and uh and and his uh ownership of this uh this is this this vehicle i figured it might actually be a great idea to keep uh, a bit of an insurance policy up where they can see it if you follow my meaning cap make no. sure that they don't accidentally friendly fire into the second center of us look the amount of money he spent on this ship he's not gonna friendly fire it at this point so curious that you say that because he's got more than as you do Oh no! What? <laughs> As you do, there is a decided sound of distant ballista and mangonel fire. It's actually just mangonel fire. As the. Oh. Sh there is an attack against. Uh, and a decided hit. What? <laughs> Your sails take 13 points of damage as this large mangonel shot just rips through them. Just missing Lieutenant Tarquin. Uh, Get him. God damn it. Get him down from there. The bastard. Everybody looks behind the ship and you can see approaching you quite literally from behind is the prime water. She is closing in quite quickly upon you mm. she has broken from the rest of the fleet you can now see the fleet the first rate probably about a hundred or so feet beyond as well as several of the dwarvish thordanes those are those very sort of ziggurat like ships their trebuchets are busy firing at the kraken and sailing in front of her is the little brigantine with prime water on it and you can see the mangonel is busy being winched back so that they can fire at you again how how far away from us is it? 800 feet in closing. Right, so if I stand at the back of the ship and scream, it's not likely to hear me. Not above the sound of the storm no. and Damn. the waves and yes. Do I see anyone uh, on the ship? At this distance, not really. Give me a perception check. Do I see anyone now? Uh, you now have advantage <laughs> with perception. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, let's see. Uh, not great. Um, standing in the front of the ship, there is a rather corpulent looking figure dressed in very fine clothing. Sort of similar to... Prime Water. Yeah, Mr. P himself. Yep. Um, Bastard. Indigo, what are you doing? I see them. You do okay. indeed. Yeah. Then I hurry back to to Victor. I talk to him. How? The stone. What? Prime order. For a moment, nothing happens. Then the disc lights up, and this arcanogram of prime water appears well 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 really now is the time you couldn't wait until after that thing's dead oh no not for you salt i gave you the benefit of the doubt the first time when you were really dead but then you came back only then you died again in the caves and the lizard folk apparently had slaughtered you to the man taking you prisoner except that i discover 
Once again, you have simply run away, Victor. I'm tired of you running away, Victor. So like the stray dog that you are, it is time to put you down. You think you're very important, right, Mr. Prime Water? Oh, uh, can, he, can he hear me? He doesn't appear to react only to those who are holding the uh, disc. Oh, well, uh, can, you, can you tell him, Victor, that if he does not put the fate of the world above his petty anger, revenge plans, whatever, he will be eaten? Well, my I'm friend sure. here wants you to know that if you don't put the fate of the world above your petty revenge plan, you're going to be eaten. Oh no, Victor. It is not I who has to put my petty plans above the fate of the world. Just what? you. My petty plans? What are you talking about? We're going after that thing. Yes. Surrender yourself to me. Allow my crew to board your... My ship. I'll take just you, Victor. And let the rest oh, of no. your crew save the world. Victor, tell him that she does not belong to him and never has. She loves you, Victor, and no one else. Now, take care. I'm going to take care of him. You... what are you... You, you get Lahuna, you get Flick, and you get Jexy and everyone out of you? Yeah. Fine. Thank you so much. I... I, I really enjoyed the time. Wait, wait, what are, you, what are you doing? Where are you going? I dropped the stone onto the deck for now. Over. Ah. He turns around and <laughs> probably staggers at the sh as the ship Rise. is or something. But Rise. she's trying to get to sunlight on the cresting waves. All right, um, that's what you're trying to do. Indigo, don't be a fool, you're going to die. Hearing this, uh, Jagzy will rush down into the um, the supply um, the supply room down below deck. Uh -huh. uh, return retrieving uh, a bunch of very very long iron stakes. Okay. You can go and get some long iron stakes, Lahuna. Fifty feet away from this gigantic beast. Yeah, I think it's time to start climbing. Is it? Wait, it's distracted, right? Things are happening. Uh, you don't know. Nothing seems to be happening under the water except that the undead in the water seem to be moving now with purpose past you and behind you. They're swimming in the direction that you've just come from. Okay. The Kraken hasn't changed speed or anything. Mm. No, it's still pulling itself forward, but the two tentacles that were pulling it forward are no longer in the water. Now it's just using its arms to pull itself forward. Ooh, interesting. Okay, have I got a tentacle close to me? 50 feet away, if you want to carry on swinging towards it, you certainly can. Yep, I'm heading for a tentacle. All right. You uh, swim. Again, things are swimming past you. They're not paying any attention to you whatsoever. And you make it to the edge of this tentacle. You can see as it's in the water, there's like a haze just over the surface of it, which you realize is almost dissolved, rotting flesh just hanging in this miasma around the base of the creature. Yeah. The biomass pyramid, pyramid has got really intimate at this point. Mm -mm. Gross. Okay. Even your tentacles on your armor are kind of pulling back, going, mm -mm, we have standards. No, no, the, <laughs> the shells are like this. They're like, we're not eating this. This is gross. Yeah. I'm glad. What are you I'm doing? happy for them. You're going to try and climb up? I'm going to poke the tentacle. Let me give you a bit of an idea very quickly of what you are seeing as I you approach this. the tentacle. You oh. and young Flick. My Flick Pack. Your Flick Pack, <laughs> yes. Young Flick Pack. Um, <laughs> yes. I will share this with you 
but I'm not going to show the audience just yet because I'm mean and evil. I will show you that. That is what the two of you are. There's a vague tentacle shape that you are starting to climb up in this very murky water. A tentacular suggestion. Yes. Okay. Oh dear. Oh, oh, I, I just zoomed out. Yes, I, you shouldn't. Oh. You really, really shouldn't. No, no. Oh, I'm zooming no. back in. I'm zooming no. back in. We can no. zoom out for you guys. Zoom back. in. Okay. No. That is the full extent of the creature of doom. Oh, no. So when I poke the tentacle, what happens? When you poke the tentacle, nothing oh, much why. happens. It's Excellent. sort of blubbery. The miasma sort of pools around it. Nope. Nothing else okay. seems to happen. Okay, I'm gonna start climbing. You're gonna start climbing. <laughs> okay, and Flick, you're yeah. holding onto the back. Give me a dexterity saving throw, please, Luna. Oh no. No. Don't say things like that. Don't die. Us, please? Please don't die. Eleven. Uh... You step forward over a patch of skin which looks to be slightly more transparent than the rest. And as you do, the entire film just tears. Yes, Flick? Uh... As I am, like, literally part of Lahuna right now... Yes. Can, I, can you kind of wiggle it a little bit and say that we're kind of the same entity? Sure. Because we're just, like... We're in the same five-foot space, for yes. sure. Okay. Um, as a reaction um, to this thing, I'm going to use um, one of my War Mage uh, reactions to cast Arcane Deflection, and we get a plus four to the deck save. Right. Okay. So I'm basically going to use my magic to just push us up and over this tear. Lovely. You that protect, I, I attack. I like <laughs> it. <laughs> that is exactly what happens. You just lurch over. The tear continues. You don't fall into it. You realize that this is an ancient abscess or <laughs> a boil of some kind, but erupting out of it is uh, just a whole bunch of undead. Oh, they no. just burst around this area as uh, you uh, need to, watch them. You need, you need to uncover this because it's still very dark and black and terrible. Just this, this piece. I knew it was an octopus. I didn't know it was a stuffed octopus. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. As these undead sort of pull themselves out one stands much bigger than the other and it looks as if it's a, a minotaur of some kind you're not entirely sure wow jagged jaw you're not... getting your spikes you have got your spikes okay um as i um re return to the top of the deck um uh, i looked at uh indigo and uh, realize that she intends to uh, go and confront Prime Water directly. Uh, there is no way that Jagger is letting that happen. Not, um, not on her own, anyway. Um, so Jagger Jaw looks to the captain and says, um, um, "Permission to uh, accompany Indigo." Go. No, sort of... Just don't die on me. I want the both of you back. This ship isn't right without you. You make sure that you get our other people back. Lahuna and Flick, they're in a lot of danger. And we won't be able to save them if we're busy dealing with Prime Order. But I know if anyone could do it, Captain, it'll be you. Good oh, luck that's... to you. Thank you. Till! You one-eyed bastard! I'm ready to fire! I'm ready to fire! He says he's sitting on the ballista. <laughs> Just too far uh, away for that, Captain. Uh, I look at Indigo and I look at the uh, the horse. Uh, I'll look at Indigo and I said, I don't think she's going to take the both of us, so I guess I'll... Oh, she doesn't have to. Oh. Hold out your hand. I hold out my hand. 
Indico jumps and turns into a snake and <laughs> oh, ripples around like like a bracelet around Jexy's arm. <laughs> Never mind, too. Let me get to that fan art. <laughs> Never mind. Right. You want me to unload? We're not going no, to no, hire. No, keep, keep it loaded. Keep it loaded. But, but you don't need to shoot me. Uh, all right. Um, um, I suppose there, there, big bird horse. I'm going to get on you, and I'm not going to eat you. <laughs> but don't throw me. Give me an animal handling check. Oh no! Uh, the deal was <laughs> for a nice petite little blue elf. I got an eight. No. You wrestled Daphne to the ground last time the ship was going down. She remembers. Uh, I, I'm, I, I'll, I'll try to grab, <laughs> to grab on. <laughs> the this is Pegasus. going really well. Yeah, the Pegasus looks at you and then notices the snake wrapped around your arm and her great big soft white nostrils flare for just a moment and then she seems to stand in expectation of you jumping up and riding on her. <laughs> Alright, I'll, I'll, I'll very gingerly sort of climb across. I'll strap the, uh, the iron rods uh, to my back. Uh, and then with both hands, sort of grab her. I, I think it's important to point out that stealing a Pegasus of her, His Majesty's Royal Shut Navy up. is. Yes. The, the snake flicks her tail in in something akin to a rude gesture. <laughs> <laughs> Jagajor is currently terrified. Um, up until this point, he didn't realize how frightened of heights he was. Uh, so he is he's kind of. Hanging on with 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 like these <laughs> wide shark eyes. Okay, 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 okay. Oh, this is a terrible idea. Okay, ah! I guess. Sun on the cresting wave <laughs> launches up into the air, and <gasps> <laughs> not what she's drinking. <laughs> ah, timing. Is a sinking feeling in your stomach as her massive wings just unfold and she pushes down, unused to this weight that's on her at the current moment in time, because you're a big shark, as big she struggles to try and get altitude. The rain now seems to be getting heavier as you're moving through it. It starts to actually sting as it spatters about onto uh, your hide. Back down below, the large creature, well, not the large creature, but one of the creatures anyway, uh, starts to move with you as if it's sort of following something. Both of you can give me perception checks. I'm wondering if Flick farted. <laughs> just bubbles. Ow. Right. <laughs> perception checks, if you please. I, I apparently can't find anything perception, anymore. Perception or survival, <laughs> either or. Dirty 20 from Flick. Ooh, good. Good, good, good. Ooh. Oh, eight. Ooh, I saw something. Very good. Because <laughs> you are so close to the miasma that covers over the up, the, 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 the crackerledge, you can see that you're creating a wake that's disturbing this stuff as you're heading up towards the, the, the breakwater and that these things seem to be following that. Do I know how long I have left on my invisibility? About, I would say, 12, 10 minutes, somewhere in that ballpark. It's difficult with magic. It never lasts as long as you want it to. <laughs> like so many things. Um, <laughs> my asthma is... is Sorry, uh, so my is, is very much localized around the tentacle. It, it seems to it seems to it? cover the entire uh, crackerlich itself. Yes, it's about uh, probably about half a foot thick. Okay, but I can still swing swim up the kraken yes. if I'm not in. Yes, absolutely. Okay, then I guess I'm I'm gonna. You swim the plan. Away a little bit. Yep. Plan in Lahuna's tiny little fish brain <laughs> is leave the miasma in one direction and then shoot back in the other direction 
I'm trying to be cunning. Give me a deception a nomad. check, you sneaky little merfolk. I'm trying to gnome it, exactly. Yes. I have seen Victor tell me. I have tried to explain <laughs> it to you eight I times. Have seen I have seen Victor tell me. It's, it's a great way to say he tried to tell me, and I just looked at him and smiled. Oh, yeah, yes, yes. What was your deception? It's mad, get me out of here. Oh, was that your roll for deception? I didn't roll anything. Oh, please roll a deception check. I shall. You have a certain sense of satisfaction as these undead continue to just walk in the direction of your wake trail rather in the direction that that you're currently heading. They're dumber than me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Finally. Yeah, they don't actually Found in the wild. It's dumber than me. You are about <laughs> now ten foot below the water surface. Okay. Cool. How you can cool. breach it in this round if you like. And I'm still invisible. Yes. Except that I will drip. And have a tail. Yes. That's okay. The tail is the least of my problems. Akin is one of the most of my problems right now. Yes. Do you breach the surface? No. There's no reason to. Actually, maybe we should take a look. Yeah, we... Yeah. Let's let's take a look. Okay, let's see what's going on. Yeah, okay. All right. You swim up and breach the surface. The eyes. And you realize that you were on the side of its very large bulbous head and That's reaching so up things. 15 feet above you is then the bow of a very broken old human warship which has been lashed to the creature's back with harpoons, spines and cables. That's the cockpit. The what pit? That's where we ride it from. Oh, okay. I thought you said something else. I've always wanted to ride a kraken. It's the first time I saw it. It's like, I bet it would be great to ride that thing. Uh, It's at that point that you also see, not too far away, Snicked riding on the brow of this very large creature. Huh. Definitely, definitely missing everything from below the rib cage to <laughs> the ground. He doesn't have a tail, just bones, animated flesh. No, no, never, never seen him before in my life. I'm sure. I'm sure. No, no, <laughs> no, no. Let's carry on up. Okay. Both of you roll one d twenty, please. Do not roll a one. No. I hate it when you say things like that. Looks fine. Uh-huh. I rolled off the thing, so I'll try again. I can't be trusted with these toys. The two of you watch <laughs> as more mangana, uh, trebuchet shot thump down. One of them slams into the front of this oh, no. ship, causing bits of rotten, soggy wood to shower about everywhere. And as it does so, you catch a glimpse of someone standing on top of the ship wearing this very tattered military uniform, not dissimilar to what the Admiral was wearing, Flick, when you bumped into him into town. That's Mr. Squidgy! That's what we need. Yes, okay, let's let's go. Well, we're climbing. Are we swimming now or are we climbing? Now you will Uh, be on land. Which way is Squidgy facing? Forwards, I guess. He is facing forwards. He's watching. We want to go behind Squidgy. Wait, who's Squidgy? There's, I feel like we need more definition here. <laughs> Mr. Squidgy, the man with the reins. Aha, uh-huh. right. Commodore Havast. He's Gankari. the lich we need to kill, or the right. undead. Okay, so yeah. you're going to try and work your way around that. So you're going to you, you're going to try and go a little bit north on the map, towards uh, yes. the, the middle yeah. of the ship. Right. I would like to go north towards gotcha. in water because I'm way faster towards the the the, the back of the ship yes all right and get up that way we yes. are still invisible though so yes you are uh, but it is very dark the storm above you which is now raining down on you is making it difficult to see and there's this very strange shadowy effect you realize it's the two massive tentacles reared up into the air and they seem to be gathering lightning Ooh. 
does not look good. Back to the second chance. <sighs> what are your orders, Captain? Says Adrian Brightshield. Uh, uh, oh gosh. What was his name? I could change shoot Till. it, says Matt, uh, uh, Till. Till, I've got a target for you. Oh yeah, ready to fire. Give the word. You see that big bastard on the on the bow? On the ship behind us? Aye. Do you think you can nail him from here? Nay, Captain, too far. Damn it. What Need about to get closer the, by about, about 500 feet, Captain, give or take. What about the mangonel? I don't fire the mangonel. I fire the ballista, Captain. I'm not a mangonel firer. That's not my job. Right, then whoever fires the mangonel, can you please fire the mangonel? Oh, I will fire the mangonel to see it, Captain, says the little hairy ginger dwarf. He loads it up. Uh, begging your pardon, Captain. Tell where what? do you want us to fire it? The man on the bow of the ship over there. If he's still on the bow of the ship. He blinks those big heavy red eyebrows up and down. Now that he can see. <laughs> Begging your pardon, Captain, but you want me to hit a man on a boat 800 feet away? Yes, I want you to try. Hey, that's about as bad as you're going to get. He runs over to Pray the ballista. And try. That's all I'm asking. They crank it down. He sort of leans. He looks. He fires at Gallon Prime Water. <laughs> we can try. Sorry, I misrolled that. You Ooh. watch as the mangonel falls way short. Almost got him, Captain. We'll try again. Don't you worry. Good, just keep doing that. And right. then I want to I want to try actually also as well using the nomad action. Try to make it harder for Primordial to hit us. You're going to try nomad. I'm going to try the nomad. The crew follow your orders as you order the ship to come around. Well, to sort of to to dodge and yeah. weave, sort of fake it. Yes, and it's a deception. Correct. Roll. Give me your check. Hmm. Prime. Why did it not? It, oh, because I didn't actually run it. I just dropped it. <laughs> Let's try that. They have fallen for it. <gasps> nice. Your armor class is improved. No, uh, they have disadvantage on. Attacks. Oh, sorry. Yes, they have disadvantage on all checks. Yes. Yes. Apologies. Evasive is the plus That's two. That's the one I was thinking of. Quite right. Yes. It's the prime water again. She fires at your sails, but as you say, they have disadvantage. Again, that ripping sound, and with disadvantage, it's still a hit. More damage ah. rips into your sails. Can we have the gunner next time? Can we recruit <laughs> 26 them? 26 <laughs> points of damage. You watch in horror as the lateen sail just crashes down over the deck, shattered completely. Please, can someone untie me from this mast? They seem cut to be aiming down. at the mast. Someone cut him down. I'll do it. I'm not doing anything at the moment, Captain. This is uh, <coughs> mop eyed Till. <laughs> the ship speeds. When we compare, you are down five foot, so your ship is moving at about 25 feet per round. This is moving at 40 feet, so they gain on you. As we move forward, they are now only 400 feet away. You can now definitely see Prime Water is busy watching. Indigo, you and our dear Jagsy are airborne. The wings busy flapping around. What are you? What are you telling the horse? Can I even talk to the horse as a snake? You can't as a snake, but Jagsy can. I've put your you, you two are going on the same initiative. I don't want to die. <laughs> <laughs> the, the the snake's the snake rears up and taps you softly with its nose. Aww. Aww. Uh, all right. I'm gonna I'm gonna try and 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 sort of point towards the um 
the the the, the rigging uh, or the, the where the crow's nest is for the for the Pegasus to hopefully make its way towards the Prime Order's ship up there. Give me an animal handling check, please. Oh, good, good lord, no. <laughs> When operating Hi. vehicles such as Pegasi, it's advised that the operator has some experience in riding said... Uh, yes! Oh, natural yes! 20. It's Very cracking nice. time! It's crack where, where, where's the natural... There's the natural... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like I said, I'm, I'm good at the things I'm apparently not supposed to be good at. So yes, apparently uh, Sun on ranger. the Christian wave no, knows exactly what it is. Yeah, that's true. I'm a ranger who's afraid of heights, riding a flying <laughs> Pegasus, which apparently I'm awesome at. Apparently um, you're awesome at. Handle animals, eat them. That's <laughs> true. Um, I trick them. I open my mouth and just say. No. Uh, okay, so, um, yes, I, I, we're heading towards the uh, the crow's nest. Yes. Uh, once once we arrive, uh, I will uh, disembark and then, in, in an attempt to communicate with it, tell it to return to um, the second oh, chance. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. Wait, when Damn you it. say disembark, you imply uh, that she's going to land nicely on the deck and that Prime Water and his lackeys are going to just let a Pegasus land. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Uh, up near the crow's nest, where it is, I'm basically going to either hop or flop off into the... Aha! Uh -huh. Give me an basket. acrobatics check rather than than, than working can, out what happens later. Can, can, I, can I do an athletics? Uh, well, uh, no, this is because you're trying to, to, to reach out and actually grab something first. Ah, oh, dang it. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's not like bad. a gazelle, oh, that's you that's leap good. gracefully and land on the topsail of this ship <laughs> near the crow's nest, and it's very easy to hold on, although it's raining and there's wind and the ship is rocking from side to side, there's plenty of rope and plenty of rigging. You two are fine. Yes! <sighs> the undead down on the Kraken yeah, are now starting to very slowly make their way around. They seem to be sort of guarding that patch. One of them has broken the surface though. Uh, the one formerly known as uh, Chiral. Their head is just above the water as they're standing sort of staring blankly at whatever it was that disrupted the territories. Uh, in the in the area. Okay. I mean, we haven't been introduced, so I'm assuming we don't know his name is Chiral. No, no, not yet. No, that's cool. Uh, I'm not going to escape that social encounter. Um, I'm I'm going towards the back of the boat still. I'm going to get to you now. I'm just going through the initiative tracker. Luna, yes, you are going towards the back. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you need to give me a perception check again, please. And you okay, can as well can flick. So well past. We are no longer uh, Lahuna and Flick. Oh, really? We are Fluhuna. Fluhuna! Fluhuna, you realize. <laughs> it's cracker time! Fluhuna. Oh. With a combined perception of 38. Nice! The two of you, although it's difficult to see on the map, the two of you suddenly realize that there is a gigantic pit directly in front of you. Ooh. It's at least 20 foot long and 15 foot wide. Knowing the basic shape of giant undead krakens as the two of you do, it's probably a remnant of the living creature. This is probably an external jet that it would have siphoned water through to propel it through the uh, the oceans as it was hunting down giant whales and the like. If you were to fall into that, you would fall into the creature itself. You can either... Mr. Sky have a map for that. <laughs> Which we've already discovered is full of people. It is full of undead and so, the ship. so much stuffing. It's like octopus rupiano. 
We don't want to do that. <laughs> you can climb up the right. side of it, or you could swim out around that pit. But, uh, could, uh, yeah, no, go, go We're up. We're going to try and We're climb up it. Still. Yeah. All right, yeah, you the have voice the... is telling me to go up. <laughs> you have the belt of climbing. You start to claw your way up. I need you to make me a constitution saving throw, please, Lahuna, as in order to climb up it, you have to get very close to the surface of it. You can't, sadly, climb up at arm's length. I can do that. You grip Did you know bits of I am old un flesh. I am undiseasable, rather. You are undiseasable. I am you undiseasable. are okay. Flick. You are oh, being no. dragged up this thing, and bits of it are coming off in Lahuna's hand as she is climbing up you realize that if this stuff comes into contact with you it probably will be bad but you see every now and again a bit of the slime kind of falls onto luna's face as she's pulling herself up and there's this ever so faint glow of divine energy which just vaporizes it as it gets anywhere near her mouth <laughs> you don't think you have the same divine protection I don't know, but I will very subtly cast a uh, shield if anything comes near me. All right, so you're you're holding. If anything comes, it's shield, and and that's it. All right. Yeah, I just basically cast the magical barrier around both me and Lahuna. Okay. Are you, so you're gonna cast it now? No, no. I can use just it as a if, reaction. Okay. All right. If something comes towards you. Right, you are. Jagged jaw. You are standing on top of this deck. I must open up another map. But yes, you are on top of this deck. What are you doing? Uh, you're muted. Uh, so standing near the uh, the crow's nest, um, I'm going to raise my this hand that has uh, indigo wrapped around it. Uh, I'm going to um, look at the, the snake amidst the rain and the crashing waves uh, and say... You reckon you can cover me? Just whilst you were looking at, Lahoon, at uh, Indigo, the snake, the ship is displayed below you in its full resplendent glory. And it has a crew of 20 who are all on board, all on deck, busy manning the mangonel and the ballistas, which are being prepared to fire just so that you get an idea of what is happening on the deck below you. Oh, all right. Um, I'll look at Indigo and repeat the same thing, but uh, this time gesture and point towards the uh, the mangonels and weapons. The snake un un uncoils I from your wrist. Your map now. Yes. It sits down, turns back into Indigo, and she says, I... I hold them back and you eat? Uh, well, actually, uh, I have a cunning plan. <laughs> no, don't do uh, that. <laughs> I, I, look at, I look at all my lightning rods and I, I sort of point at the mast and the big lightning storm around. Ooh. Oh, that's good. Oh. He's a smart Cap chuck. Captain good. had a plan. I will distract <laughs> them, try to eat prime water and you will call down the lightning upon this ship sounds like a plan very good i'll um i'll while she's uh attacking i'll begin my work um basically creating a lightning rod um by inserting the rods pointed upwards at the crow's nest at the highest point so whilst at the highest point of a ship in a lightning storm you are manhandling metal <laughs> rods yep I'm aware. I'm just going to say all gods are bastards as well. Just to yep. <laughs> <laughs> might as well finish the sentence. Yes. Okay. Moving swiftly along and away from that disaster. Undigo, there is someone standing next to uh, Prime Water. A gentleman wearing a very neat black coat, having a quiet conversation with Prime Water. Uh, the ship that Prime Water is on. I will show everybody a map. The ship that Prime Water is on has not 
noticed the two of you at the top of the crow's oh. nest. They saw the Pegasus fly past and did not seem to notice the two of you landing behind their sails, which are fully extended. This is so <laughs> mad. It is indeed. Oops, I uh, missed. So I missed a chance there. Um, but yes, that is what you are seeing at the very top up there. This list is so long of people. Back to you, Victor <laughs> Salt, on the ship. What are you? Right. What are you doing? What are your orders? Um, I'm gonna look around and try to grab this communication stone again. Yeah, sure. Um, let's say. Uh, Ambassador Pascarian. <laughs> Sorry, guy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I, I I didn't I didn't think about the the holograms <laughs> light up <laughs> for just a moment, and uh, then a very well you. Uh, <laughs> oh my God. Don't. I'm so sorry. I'm not really. You have some so happy. You're not sorry. I have, I, no, I'm not. I, I no, just didn't think about it before I did it. <laughs> I'll say that. It wasn't on purpose. Yes, darling! <laughs> what can I do for you? Sweetie! Oh, you're not my daughter. Where's my daughter? Where's Sweetie, darling? Where is she? What have you done with my daughter? And if you don't tell me, I'm going to see your ship right now. I know where she is, and I'm trying to help her. Good. But there's someone in the ship right behind mine who's trying to sink this one and murder all of us. And if he manages to do that, I'm not sure that you'll ever see your daughter again. She looks at you for just a second. I could appreciate the help. You want me to sink a human ship? It's firing at me. If they can have accidents, so can you, surely. And if I don't sink this human ship, then what happens to 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 my daughter Lahuna? Well, I won't be around to save her if something goes wrong, so And if I do save your ship, you will save my sweetie darling. I will do it or I will die trying. There is just one more thing that you would have yes. to do. What? Sorry, what was your name again? Captain S Victor, Sardine? Victor. Victor Salt. All right. You save Victor. Lahuna Pascarian, my daughter. Yes. yes. And then you present her at Meros for her wedding. And I will sink the ship behind you. That is something you're going to have to take up with her. I am not her father. I cannot make that decision for her. I'm but not going to have to have some kind of influence fate. over her. Otherwise, why would you be trying to save her? She's my first mate, and I care you're her about captain. her. Then you can order her to do it. Deal no, done. I... She disappears. Sorry, Luna. I tried. <laughs> <laughs> She <laughs> rather quickly, didn't she? Flick it away! Be gone! That's what uh, is happening with you up on deck. Yes, I'm gonna guess that takes my turn. Yes, it does. But that was quite the conversation. It was. Um, indigo. It's annoying indigo. the GM a free action. <laughs> <laughs> You're, you're doing that as a reaction, my dear. Yes. <laughs> what are you doing, Indigo? Indigo um, is trying to, to get down, and somewhere around here-ish... Wait, uh, sorry, let me switch maps quickly. I have never had a three-way pop... It's not even a three-way, I don't even know what this is. This is, this is a disaster. Yes. <laughs> it's a lot. So, as a snake, you're <laughs> slithering. No, you said you transformed back into Indigo. Yeah, so I can talk to Jaxi. How are you getting from there to there? You're currently about 50 foot above the deck. Yes, and there's a lot of rigging and a lot of lines, okay. and I know my yes. way around ships, and this I'm going true. to take one of them down. Okay, are you... These things are meant to be climbed. They are indeed, down. yes. Okay, so you're still in the rigging. Yes. 
And when I'm somewhere around here, I'm going to cast Thunder Wave. <laughs> and try and try and push some of these people off the boat. Oh, please don't die. Please don't die. I'm probably going to die. Let's face it. <laughs> I, I was considering whether I used the last round that not, people are not trying to kill me to cast Thunder Wave or to turn into a bear, and I decided to try and knock them over. There we We're go. on a ship. So, so Barry, go next round if I survive. <laughs> yeah, so Thunder Wave. Yes. Um, do you see? Yeah, they all have to do um, a constitution save, otherwise, they're going to get pushed away from the center of the spell. Strength save? Okay, constitution save. Crewman, that is crewman number one. Oh, there's going to be a lot of saves. Yes, now. he thought it was a constitution save, you could say. Yes, it's a 50 foot cube. He fails spectacularly. Uh, crewman number one does. Ooh, I hope you're not drawing water into the water. <laughs> ah! He falls oh! into the water. <laughs> Oops! <laughs> Well, you hire a quack. Oh, and all unsecured objects that are completely within the area of effect are automatically pushed 10 feet away. All right. That's not a lot of them. The ballista are all latched down on uh, spinnakers, but yes. Uh, crewman number three. Oh, it's running two of them. Uh, crewman number three got a 16, so he's fine. How much damage does he take if he passes? Um, the damage is... Half as much damage. Uh, 2d8 and then half. Alright, so roll me 2d8s. I will come here. One, two. So he takes four points of damage. Let me log that in there. Uh, Crimson number three. Four <laughs> points of damage. Uh, Revic, Storm Raven. I think it's about to bite it. <coughs> Where is he? Uh, this is such a long list. I'm apolo I apologize for taking so long. Because uh, we've got, I, I don't know how I many... I apologize for casting that spell. <laughs> ...different monsters involved in this battle. Now I'm going to delete these ones because they're not there. The blast slams into him. I'm just going to roll a d20. I didn't expect Natural to one! At the time. <laughs> I didn't anticipate all three maps you'd been using. <laughs> so Revit gets blasted. Is it 10 feet? 10 feet, yes. Ah! It's <laughs> boom, boom. It disappears. <laughs> <laughs> when I, there he is. I found him. Just as Away he with you. I uh, Skellen. Well, let's do Gellen first. Uh huh. Oh, please do. <laughs> His save is only a seven. Oh, oh, oh. Oops. Oh. Ten feet just knocks him into the front of the ship. Oh. And he, oh. Takes, he takes the full 2d8 damage then. So yes, nine. he does. So nine points of damage to Gallen. He is still standing. He looks incredibly angry. That was a great and hit. I love you and I'm proud of you. Finally, you Skellen my Wave Chaser. <laughs> His save. He saves. Ooh. So he takes four and mm -hmm. immediately turns around and glares directly at you. That was Indigo. Second chance helm. Indigo also. Yeah. Well, there, there's now a very angry aquatic elf who just cast a booming thunderous noise that pushed a few of the people on deck off the deck yes. and she screams at prime water i will eat you oh no she means it indeed <laughs> seriana starts climbing up the rigging coming towards you she has a knife drawn uh who's next uh, that's the undead. They're wandering down there. They're not going to do anything this round. Not going to do anything this round. 
they've fired, your sails are in tatters, they're not doing anything this round, he hasn't been summoned yet. I'm getting there, I'm getting there, I'm getting there. You can do it. This list is just super long of all the creatures <laughs> and things. Lahuna! Oh, thank goodness. Lahuna, you <gasps> are up next. Okay, so, um, Lahuna isn't singing because she doesn't want to make any noise. But probably Flick can hear her going. <laughs> As she climbs up this octopus. Oh. Oh, yes. We're definitely going to die. All right. You continue to climb up this creature. You get onto what you would assume to be the same level as the base of the ship. And you can see Snicked just skulking down uh, nearby, but he doesn't seem to be doing anything, uh, just watching. The two tentacles now drop back into the water, and it's like watching a tree fall. They just crash down. But as they do, they seem to rip the sky open. And this bolt of lightning just sails forward and slams into one of the... Into the dwarvish Thordane immediately to the left of the first rate ship. And it just explodes in shrapnel and bits and pieces as this bolt just continues to arc into it. You can see little tendrils zapping out to hit actual crewmen as the ship is now aflame and sinking and slowly dislodging. The uh, creature then uses those two paddles to pull itself forward and it now is bearing down. You can see directly in front, a fairly close distance away, 300 feet and getting closer, the plucky little second chance barreling forward. And from the front, on the ballista, you can see Till the Mopide map maker going, I'm coming! I'm coming! <laughs> That's where we end today's episode. No! We will continue <laughs> next week. <sighs> dear, oh dear, oh dear. Big oh. thank you to uh, Dungeon Fog for making this most wow. terrifying Kraken map. I think it's absolutely adorable. Everything was made inside Dungeon oh, Fog, as well as all of the other maps that you've seen today. World Anvil for keeping our heroes safe, because <laughs> we know they're not safe anywhere else. And uh, <laughs> oh, no. Fantasy Grounds for giving us some amazing roles. Players, you guys yes. had some spectacular roles. Thank so, you. Uh, that was very, very, very lucky. And of course, to all my wonderful, wonderful players, thank you for entertaining us this evening. And to all of you for watching. I really enjoyed uh, running the game today, and I hope we see you all next week for our grand finale, which may run a little longer than expected, but don't panic, it's all good. If you haven't yet started on Mama Sarduk's treasure hunt, fear not, you can still participate. We've moved the final date out from the 1st of September to the 8th of September to accommodate for the show's delays. So you can still find that amazing treasure. Go to www.greatgamemaster.com to join the treasure hunt. The clues have been played down below all evening. Go and have a look for that. Until next week, we will be in below the decks in about five minutes on www.twitch.tv great gm we will be there we'll be talking to the cast and unpacking what happened in today's events but <laughs> until next time may the waters not be grave